the higher faith. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. John chapter 20, verse 29. The aspiring child is often checked by the dull disciple who has learned his lessons so imperfectly that he has never got beyond his school books. Full of fragmentary rules, he has perceived the principle of none of them. The child draws near to him with some outburst of unusual feeling, some scintillation of a lively hope, some wide-reaching imagination that draws into the circle of religious theory the world of nature and the yet wider world of humanity for to the child the doings of the father fill the spaces he has not yet learned to divide between god and nature between providence and grace between love and benevolence the child comes i say with his heart full and the answer he receives from the dull disciple is god has said nothing about that in his word therefore we have no right to believe anything about it it is better not to speculate on such matters however desirable it may seem to us we have nothing to do with it it is not revealed for such a man is incapable of suspecting that what has remained hidden from him may have been revealed to the babe with the authority therefore of years and ignorance He forbids the child, for he believes in no revelation but the Bible, and in the word of that alone. For him, all revelation has ceased with and been buried in the Bible, to be with difficulty exhumed, and with much questioning of the decayed form, reunited into a rigid skeleton of metaphysical and legal contrivance, for letting the love of God have its way unchecked by the other perfections of his being but to the man who would live throughout the whole divine form of his being not confining himself to one broken corner of his kingdom and leaving the rest to the demons that haunt such deserts a thousand questions will arise to which the bible does not even allude has he indeed nothing to do with such do they lie beyond the sphere of his responsibility leave them says the dull disciple i cannot returns the man Not only does that degree of peace of mind without which action is impossible depend upon the answers to these questions, but my conduct itself must correspond to these answers. Leave them at least till God chooses to explain, if he ever will. No, questions imply answers. He has put the questions in my heart. He holds the answers in his. I will seek them from him. I will wait but not till I have knocked. I will be patient, but not till I have asked. I will seek until I find. He has something for me. My prayer shall go up unto the God of my life. Sad indeed would be the whole matter, if the Bible had told us everything God meant us to believe. But herein is the Bible itself greatly wronged. It nowhere claims to be regarded as the word, the way, the truth. The Bible leads us to Jesus, the inexhaustible, the ever-unfolding revelation of God. It is Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, not the Bible, save as leading to him. And why are we told that these treasures are hid in him who is the revelation of God? Is it that we should despair of finding them and cease to seek them? Are they not hid in him that they may be revealed to us in due time, that is, when we are in need of them? Is not their hiding in him the mediatorial step towards their unfolding in us? Is he not the truth, the truth to men? Is he not the high priest of his brethren to answer all the troubled questions that arise in their dim humanity? For it is his heart which contains of good, wise, just, the perfect shape. Didymus answers, No doubt what we know not now we shall know hereafter. Certainly there may be things which the mere passing into another stage of existence will illuminate. 
but the questions that come here must be inquired into here and if not answered here then there too until they be answered 